So I have my phone leaned up against my laptop and I just tried to start the live stream by moving the cursor on my computer, but I'm doing the live stream on my phone. And I'm like moving it. I'm like, why would I click? Why can't I move it to the button that says go live now? Oh my goodness. The silly things that we do. So yeah. So I figured out that my cursor on my computer is not attached to my phone. Go figure, right? Okay. Hopefully I don't have chocolate in my teeth because this morning I decided I've been up since many crickets. I've probably been up since like 4.30 in truth of the matter. Morning as morning Craig. Um, but I decided that I was going to treat myself with, I have these gluten-free flax brownie bites and they are these decadent little morsels that I absolutely love. And I woke up with the sweet tooth. So I thought I'm going to just treat myself to, to exactly this right here. So Maybe it's the chocolate first thing in the morning that made me think that my computer and laptop, I mean my computer and my, see I can't talk, my laptop and my phone were connected in some crazy ass way. And maybe it's just that I haven't had enough coffee yet. Oh no. Morning Chelsea. Addison called me pretty. I know. I'm so pretty. Hey, it was a blonde moment, okay? We all have them. We all have them. No, but this morning... I was um, surfing through my email and looking at different things that came up with some client conversations over yesterday and last night and, you know, all the things that happened while I was sleeping because my clients don't seem to stop when I'm sleeping. What? I mean, <laughs> so they're reporting in about different stuff and there was just some beauty to some of the conversations that were coming in and then my daughter, bless her soul, she posted, oh, thank you, Chelsea. My uh, daughter, she posted a meme this morning from whatever place I actually ended up liking the page. So I'm sure I'll get more stuff, but she posted this picture. So if you go to my actual profile, you'll see a picture that I just posted before I jumped on here. And um, there's this picture of this, a drawing of a woman and she's in a red dress and it says, I refuse to remain silent for your comfort. And I was like, wow, does that ever hit the nail on the head of for a topic today because that's exactly what I see happening with all of my clients and even in my own life where I've had to really step up and look at like where am I remaining silent to help other people's comfort and and now I'm just causing this you know frustration and irritation and actually distancing in relationship so I have had to get real with myself but I see that my clients are doing this as well and so guess what that means? That probably some people that follow me that aren't here local that don't work with me one-on-one, -on -one, that you guys might be going through the same thing. So that's why we, this is how topics come about for Conscious Coffee is that I'm just paying attention and this kind of stuff comes to me and I go, hey, here you go. Here you go. So the topic is silence, you know, silence for the sake of comfort and what that really means. You know, I am pretty sure that you can think of a time in the past or maybe in the present that you have just kept your mouth shut, kept your truth held, your opinion, your actual needs, desires, wants, even, even readjusted your boundaries to make sure that somebody else's comfort was taken care of to make sure that the situation did not become, you know, erupted in any fashion or form, to not rock the boat or rattle the cage of what was going on. And what did that do to you? Or what is that potentially doing to you if this is you in the current, you know? I can tell you that through the course of time, personally speaking on the matter, I what it does to me is that it causes me anxiety. It causes me frustration. It causes me to really question myself, what I'm wanting, what I'm needing, and to get into a crazy space in my own thinking, which then causes me to become extremely emotional. Hey, Chelsea, what are you saying? Sometimes I stay silent for my own comfort, of that, if that makes sense. Yes, and that's I'm getting to that too. <laughs> but then I end up blowing up and exploding, which guess what yesterday's topic was? Yesterday's topic was on, on you know, my world is blowing up. Why? Like, why is my world blowing up? It's on the blow ups. Well, here we are. Part of the reason why we blow up things in our life, why we, you know, as I refer to, you know, burn down the village mindset that we can get into 
is because we have been keeping our truth held so tight. We have not been actually speaking what our needs are, what our desires are, what our boundaries are. And we're doing this for the sake of comfort in just generalized comfort. A lot of the times we do it because we are we are people pleasing, because we fear retraction of the relationship of love, of connection. We fear that of a, we have a fear of abandonment. We fear that we're not going to that we're going to be judged if we speak our truth. We fear that we fear that you know that those that we might need to have a difficult conversation with are not going to be accepting of our needs or our desires or the things that we have to say. We're scared of the confrontation, right? We're scared of that confrontation, so we don't want to rock that boat. And then there is the fear of like, well, if I just remain cool about this, then I get to remain comfortable too because I'm not pushing myself into that, right? I'm not pushing myself into that difficult conversation. I'm not pushing myself into the reality that I desire something more, something different. I should just be grateful for what I have. I have all of this. Like, let's just be grateful for this and not want for anything more. Reality check. You're human. You're going to consistently want for more until the day that you die. And I can't speak for the aftermath of that, but I can tell you that from now, from the, every breath you take, in this life, you are going to be wanting for something more. This is what being human is about, is to have desire and to want for something more. This is expansion. This is evolution. This is transformation. This is how we grow. This is what life is about. And when we have no freaking clue as to what we want, we make it impossible for ourselves to ever be fulfilled. I'm going to say that again. When we don't know what we want, we make it impossible for ourselves to be fulfilled. And this is because we we really just have this, this toughness of, if I have no clarity around it, well, then I don't know what's going to make me happy, right? I have no idea what's going to make me happy. But we can try. Let's just throw spaghetti at the wall, right? We're going to just throw spaghetti at the wall and see if that works and see if that works and see if that works. But we're not really doing the deep dive. And in order for us to have real true fulfillment in life, we have to do this. We have to get out of our comfort zones. The magic happens outside of the comfort zone, whether that comfort zone is inside our space, you know, inside of our heads and our bodies, where we're just keeping everything at bay, at bay, at bay, at bay until we explode. Is what? There's only so much pressure that we can hold. There's only so much emotion that we can hold. There's only so much lack of integrity with self and with others that we can that we can do before all of a sudden our vessel, that vessel being us, right, our physical, mental, emotional bodies, before something shatters, before we get a crack in the dam that we have built on not speaking our truth. And when that crack happens, that's where those explosions come from. That's where that eruption comes from. I'm working with quite a few people right now and that, and I know that people that I know personally and clients and everything have popped in from yesterday's conversation and said, you know, like I am just really experiencing a lot of little fires. I'm experiencing a lot of, a lot of blow ups in my life. My world is kind of crashing and burning right now. And I, you know, I, how do I, what do I do? What I have also seen is like yesterday I was working with a couple and they had an explosive, rageful day where I was just, you know, I'm busy with other clients and I'm coaching through because part of my coaching is that I'm pretty much available 24 seven to my clients and I do unlimited text coaching. So I'm like, speak to me throughout the day. Even if I can't respond in a moment, I want you to keep corresponding with me so that I can help you through it. And then as soon as I have that free space and I can catch up and I can go, okay, here's some advice, try this, do this, you know, pause here, here's an exercise, all this kind of stuff. And I can facilitate some healing and some deep dive intervention work with people that way. And this one couple, they were definitely making use of that bonus in my coaching and they were just really going to town on this stuff. And at the end of the day, I had um, shared a little bit of inquiry work with them. So some journaling and some inquiry work with them. And I woke up this morning to this beautiful share from the male um, partner in the, in the relationship where he really decided, like, I'm going to lean out of my comfort zone. And I have this exact same thing happening with another couple. And I have, again, the guy in that, in that situation in the couplehood is, has just been feeling all of this and this tension and this tension, and it's all fear-based. And if you'll notice that when we feel this anxiety, when we feel this pain, this struggle, this tension in us, 
and we're going, well, I just want to get to that place of comfort, right? I just want to feel peaceful. I just want to feel comfort. And I don't want to feel this anymore. This is not caused necessarily from what is going on. It is caused from our fear, our fear of the future about what is going on. It's not caused from the actual moment that is presenting itself. It's caused from our fear of the future. And that is what's causing this gripping anxiety and panic attacks and all this stuff inside of us. And we're just like, ah, ah, like that, right? And it's a lot to take in. But I can tell you that the, the space through it is really just to breathe in and go, what am I fearing? Like, what am I really truly fearing here? What, how is this fear serving me in this moment? I love that question because when we bring into our thought process the word serving around any emotion or action, around the thoughts that we're thinking, and we ask ourselves, how is this serving me right now? It really puts a different perspective on the thoughts, the emotions, and the actions that are taking place that we are doing for ourselves. Hey, baby girl, my daughter just popped on. Um, so yeah, so it's just, you know, really leaning into that and owning the fact that, you know, I am worried, I am anxiety ridden, I am fearful. Yes, this moment is contributing to it. It triggered something inside of me, but I have a choice right now to lean into it and to look for other options and opportunities for growth here and other options to help myself feel better, to level up my emotion, to come back to appreciation, to come back to connection, or I can lean into the fear and I can fully embrace the anxiety, the panic, the worry, the stress, the anger, whatever that emotion is. Hey, Shannon. And I can move toward that, which is what? What is that going to do? That's going to actually cause us to have that blow up in the end. Because what are we going to do? We're going to hold and we're going to repress and we're going to really struggle with that. And the more we hold and repress it, then inevitably we blow a gasket around it, right? Because again, our tank can only hold so much of repression before we blow, before we ignite the situation. And then we speak all of our truth, except it comes out distorted because it is blending with anger. It's blending with all of this negative assumption, thinking, and feeling that we have built up with inside ourselves. So we haven't been getting an accurate picture of what is going on because we're building stuff in our mind and we're feeling emotions around what we're building in our mind, not what actually is occurring. So we're now painting a new picture on what is going on and then we blow a gasket around that and then we start spewing all this garbage out around an illusion that has a little bit of truth running through it. An illusion that has a little bit of truth running to it. And what we have to do in that in, in those times is like, number one, I'm an advocate for, you know, I used to be, you could say I had lots of hostile moments, you know, that would occur where I felt under attack and I was assuming and I was painting all these different things in my head and I was holding and holding and holding and I lot I had a list and a half of reasons as to why I needed to hold space for this discomfort why I needed to hold space and not speak my truth and, you know, to not rock the boat. When I was a young mother, you know, and I just, and I had only five kids back then, right? I only had five kids back then. Now I got seven. But when I had five kids and I was in my twenties and in my early thirties and I didn't get all of this and I was learning about it, but I still didn't really understand and I wasn't embodying the stuff that, you know, the practice and everything. I would hold to the point and I'd be like, well, I can't speak my truth because that's going to damage my household. That's going to damage my stability. That What's that going to do to my children? How's that going to impact? I mean, these are great logical reasons to not rock the boat, right? Very, very good reasons to not rock the boat. I don't want to hurt my children. I don't want to hurt my financial picture. I don't want to hurt the stability of house and home. I don't want to cause a ruffle between myself and my partner or between a friend and me, or between my parents or my siblings or what have you. I don't want to cause that because I don't want to cause an uprooting to happen. So we fear that uprooting, so we hold it in. And the reality is, is that we build that and it's going to, when it, when it blows, as anybody who has ever, you know, burned down their own village in, in the spewing out of the pressure, you know that a lot of damage happens in that, right? And once words are spoken, once things have been put out there, even though they may not be hardcore in 
truth, but there still is a fragment of truth in there, right? This is our pain. And even though we have painted pictures around truth and we've created this beautiful mirage around it, we're speaking this and we're putting it out there. And then we're coming from a place of hatred, a place of bitterness, a place of pain and suffering. And we're, we're throwing daggers at the others in our life. And that doesn't just rock the boat. That doesn't, they're, they're not, they're not sitting in comfort when that happens. We're not sitting in comfort when that happens. We actually feel like our world is shattering in that moment because our world is, and so is their world. Then we cause a massive destruction. So wouldn't it potentially be better much like the picture that my beautiful daughter posted just earlier, you know, of like, I, re I refuse to remain silent for your comfort. I refuse to remain silent for my comfort. I refuse to remain silent and not speak my truth around what I'm needing, around what my boundaries are, around what my fears are, around what I'm seeing occur, around, you know, like, do I have this right or not? Communication is a key factor in any relationship and everything is relationship, okay? Relationships not just between you and your partner. It's not just between you and your child or your or your parent or a friend. They're, everything is relationship. And it, we have to start to become more aware of what our needs are there. And if we don't know what our needs are, then we can't expect the fulfillment to occur, right? So the questioning needs to be like, why am I not happy? Let's ask that question. Why am I not happy? Like, let's really dig down. Let's not accept those surface level answers from ourselves. And let's actually dig down and go, why am I really not happy here? Because the more we dig and the more we uproot what's going on in us, then we're going to be able to express what our needs are, what our ideas are, what our desires are. And we can speak those in a space of love and compassion instead of burning down the village and having them come out in hatred and and really just this horrible version of just throwing daggers at the relationships that we have. So I encourage you today to look at where where have you been throwing the daggers? Where are you waiting for the pressure to become so much that you can't handle it anymore, that you just can't handle it? If you don't know what you want, sit with those questions of like, why am I not happy? What What is not fulfilling me in my life? Where am I having a lack of gratitude? What are some of the things that I have that are blessings in my life? Do some of those kinds of inquiries around, around your life today and really let yourself go deep with that. A very, very simple question to ask yourself and to ask it like 10 times is what do I want? What do I want? Well, I want a cup of coffee. Yay, I have a cup of coffee. What do I want? That's a surface level thing, right? We want for more than that. So let's go deeper. Let's go deeper and deeper and deeper with that question until we can actually get to the bottom of it. So I encourage you to ask yourself those questions. I encourage you to look at where are you pushing yourself and thinking, oh, I can handle this. The comfort is worth it. It's like, I don't want to rock the boat on this topic. I don't want to bring this to the table because I'm scared of retraction. I'm scared of abandonment. I'm scared of, of, you know, of having an argument arise. I'm scared of being misunderstood. Well, I can guarantee that you're going to get misunderstood when you're burning down your village. And right now let's deal with it. When you're still at a calm space, take the time to think it through, take the time to feel Ask yourself when you have a thought or a feeling around something, is this true? Is this true? Or, you know, because potentially, more than likely, you're definitely doing this, that you're probably putting something more into it than what is actually happening. So to communicate, is this, you know, like to ask, hey, I, this is what I hear coming from you. This is what I see. Am I right in that? And to ask yourself, if you can't ask it of another person like that, to just pause in a moment before you start to get really frustrated around something or start to feel all caught in anxiety and fear mode, ask yourself, is this true? Is this thought, is this feeling that I'm having true? Is it accurate? And now if your ego pops back and goes, fuck yeah, that's accurate. Yes, it is. Look, the evidence is right there. Am I sure? Am I sure that that's, that that's accurate? Applying doubt in this situation can birth a space of growth and a space of communication where you can actually reveal the truth and you can clear some of the paint that you've been painting onto the topic, okay? So ask those questions, dig a little bit deeper and really just lean in. Be willing to get uncomfortable in here so that you can have that fulfillment out there and that connection that you're looking for. Okay, let me run through your guys' comments really quick here. 
Hey, Chelsea. Thank you for all your comments. You go, girl. Amazing topic. Sometimes I stay silent for my own comfort. If that makes any sense, but then I end up blowing up and exploding. And yes, lots of anxiety. Also, I feel like, why do I have to keep letting it out? It doesn't change the situation. Limit your expectations on that. Know that the only thing that in your world that you have any control of is your world. Your thoughts, your feelings, your actions don't speak for change, speak for truth's sake. Limit the expectations because you can't control any anything outside of yourself. I always keep in mind there's your business, there's my business, and there's God's business. There's only one of those businesses that I have anything to say over. My business, right? Uh, I do all the time. What you have, I guess better accept I'm human. Uh, oh, thank you, Chelsea, for all of this. Uh, my mind can get the best of me, but I love that. How is that serving me? Yes. Ask yourself that. Hey, Angela, I am worried about my issue causing me to lose my family and I have so much to lose. So much to lose. Is your, is your truth worth, is, is the lack of truth and the buildup in your life and the anxiety and the emotional impact because we have learned scientifically speaking that when we hold emotion in our body and i'm going to bring this to your guys' attention it's proven over and over again that when we hold a massive amount of emotion in our body and we don't release and we don't speak our truth that we actually embody that emotion and it builds up uh, blockage in the body which has now been linked to illness in the body as well so I encourage you to find some way to get that worry, that fear, and those things out in any possible way that you can in a healthier format instead of waiting until something drastically happens to, to your body. You can also message me and I can give you some guidance on that too, Angela. Uh, okay, wow. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, well then. And you'll see the prompts there. Um, thank you to my awesome ninja out there for posting those prompts for me. Thank you. Um, you know, just really, I encourage you to look at those prompts. I encourage you to lean in, to feel your truth, and to ask, you know, I, the, the question that Angela posted there, you know, like it feels like we have so much to lose, and so many of us do, right? We have all of this to lose. Uh, you have to come to the realization, self-love is about realizing that, if we sacrifice myself 100% for anything outside of that, that what are we really losing? We're losing this life. We're losing life right now. We're losing who we are. So I ask you to really question the importance of your life, of living. Is existing more important than living to you? And really just go into that a little bit, sit with that and look at it. Because if something is out of alignment, if there's that much fear around it, potentially it is out of alignment. Or there's just, maybe there is an assumption that if the truth gets spoken, that this is going to blow things up. But sometimes the blow up also causes a purification process to happen, an awakening to happen so that we can grow a new garden. So look at that as well. Okay, guys, as always, um, events, local people, uh, Max has been postponed. So anybody who is coming to Max at Ancient Crystal Skull, it has been postponed about a month out due to uncontrollable situations that have occurred over the last couple weeks. We have to move Max to the end of February, the beginning of March. Look for those new dates on my website at www.kendallwilliams.com. Uh, events that are coming out is that I have pathways to relationships. Hey, Levi, I have pathways to relationships coming out, which is a beautiful couples event. This will be an online event that will be happening in the next couple weeks. Look for details to come out again on my website here on Facebook. You can message me for details on that. This is going to be all on. This is for couples. This is for individual singles. This is really about how we can create and harmonize relationship with 
intent, relationship that is conscious, relationship that has beautiful, you know, authentic communication that we understand what turn on is in it, not just in the sexual fashion, but that when we can actually speak desires and communicate our needs, where we're going to be talking about intimacy, integrity, and boundaries around relationships. So please explore that. Look for the details to be coming out. Local people, also ladies, there is my Empowering Bitch Divine Feminine Body Map art project that is coming up this coming Saturday. So if you are local to the Dallas-Fort Worth area, this is a small group event. We are going to be talking about the different aspects of the feminine. We're going to be going through our little girls. We're going to be talking about that motherly nurturing aspect of us. We're going to be talking about the seductress, and we're going to be talking about the wise old woman that we all have in us. We're going to pull all of that together into a beautiful art therapy project where we bring pieces of ourselves into that art project and we work through different challenges, different you know conversations that we might be having in our heads, the feelings that we have around these different aspects of self and how we can develop and fully merge these aspects to get together to create one empowered, awesome, feminine. Come to Empowering Bitch. Look uh, in the comment section for details on that. Click on the link there. Sign up today. This is, workshop is almost sold out. So there's just a couple seats uh, left for that. And as always, remember, you are worthy of the life that you want. It's just about you claiming it, okay? It's just about you claiming the life that you want. You hear me talking about the fuck yes life. You hear me talking about all this stuff. Well, it's because of a claiming process. You don't get it overnight. It's a step-by-step -step process. You have to go deep. You have to dig deep. You have to be willing to wrap your own cage and get out of that comfort zone and step into the land of miracles which is out of the comfort zone okay but it's there for you you are deserving of it you are worthy of it you don't have to do anything more than claim it and lean into who you naturally really truly are i love you guys as always stop existing start living i will catch you tomorrow with another conscious coffee thank you everybody who was on here thank you for all your beautiful brilliant conversation this morning if i've said anything that touched you or made you think of somebody help me get these messages out and hit the share button i love you guys namaste